the Pollinator Partnership works to protect the health of managed and pollinating animals vital to North American ecosystems and agriculture. The Pollinator Partnership website, pollinator.org, is a premier source of information for consumers, gardeners, land managers, educators, resource managers, producers, and farmers to help pollinators, essential components for all of life. Laura Davies Adams is the Executive Director of Pollinator Partnership. She joined the Pollinator Partnership in 1997 and has served as its Executive Director for 12 years. Well, I want to welcome you to this beautiful butterfly garden that's surrounding us here at the Smithsonian. It's actually a pollinator garden and I'm here because it's National Pollinator Week. And pollinators aren't just butterflies and they aren't just bats or ants or flies or beetles. They are also bees, and there are about 20,000 species of bees worldwide. In this country, in the United States, there are 4,000 species of bees. And some of them, at least the ones that we're paying attention to, are showing real signs of distress. And this is a relationship with the plant to the pollinator that's really vital for not only our agricultural systems, but our ecosystems as well. So it's in our best interest to take care of pollinators. And it's pretty simple to do at this point because we don't really understand exactly what's distressing the pollinators. So based on the precautionary principle, we need to do things that we do know will help pollinators. First is to plant for pollinators, create habitat, create a kind of real estate where pollinators can nest, where they can feed, get nectar sources. And the second is to be really clear that our use of chemicals has to be very judicious in the garden. Certainly if you have a problem that must use a pesticide, use the right pesticide, use it at the right time, use it in the right way. Particularly if you can manage to apply the pesticide when there's not bloom, you can be pretty assured that you're not going to be hurting the pollinators. And that's really one of your objectives when you use a pesticide. And the third thing is to learn about pollinators. And the best way I know how to do that is to visit the website pollinator.org where there is a wealth of information for everybody from the farmer to the gardener to the teacher to learn about this wonderful ecosystem service that we all depend on. Stephen Buckman is the International Coordinator for the North American Pollinator Protection Campaign. Dr. Buckman is the author or co-author of eight books and more than 175 scientific publications. In 1996, he authored The Forgotten Pollinators with Gary Paul Nabum. His latest book is Letters from the Hive, An Intimate History of Bees, Honey, and Humankind. His first children's book, The Bee Tree, about traditional Malaysian honey hunters, was published in 2005. Today we're celebrating National Pollinator Week, uh, not just on the National Mall, but all over the country. So we've got grassroots organizations and individuals dedicating a pollinator garden in Bozeman, Montana. We've got uh, bee things going on in New York City, just literally in every state. Uh, we have 36 state governors that created proclamations proclaiming it Pollinator Week in their own states, just like the uh, Secretary of Agriculture did for the U.S. and the Senate resolution. So it's really fun. We've got a beautiful Smithsonian garden here adjacent to the Natural History Museum, and we're all having a bunch of fun. We've got a uh, person dressed up in a uh, Manduka caterpillar costume. We've got a bee, and we're also celebrating Pollinator Partnership which has a website at pollinator.org and if you go to that website you can just simply put in your zip code and get one of the 31 uh, 24 page guides that we've produced so it's kind of a print on demand thing these are e what we call eco-regional planting guides you can get one it's an Adobe PDF file so you can just simply read it online or you can print it on demand if you want a paper copy and they give lists of wildflowers that you can plant. So it's not just for DC. These are things that you can use whether you live in Maine or Southern California or Missouri, any place. So we're really happy to, uh, to do that. So please visit pollinator.org and learn more about our organization. For this event, Burt's Bees donated tubes of Burt's Bees uh, beeswax lip balm, and I got one. And they were giving away posters.
Is there something each person can do? There is, as Ms. Adams points out, a wealth of information. I've spent a great deal of time on pollinator.org. I've learned a lot, and there's a lot more to learn. I ordered Dr. Buckman's books. In the meantime, I've read as much as possible. And the information on pollinator.org is credible scientific information. Of all the things that we've wished we could do for each other, hasn't there been a time when you've wished you could help another member of the YouTube community, a YouTuber far away, and you could not do anything? Or that person has wished that he or she could help you? Now we can. I think this is important. Of all the programs I've run across, I think this is the one that uh, hits home for me. We're doing this for future generations, pollinating animals. We do need our pollinating animals. If you like ice cream, I ain't got pollinated.